We are seeing the traces, literally, of a lost civilization in the Amazon. There were huge cities in the Amazon. The Amazon did have a population before the Spanish conquest of tens of millions. From natural mummies, buried cities, and lost scrolls, to one of the most important archaeological finds ever, these ancient civilization discoveries changed history. Up first is Utsi. Utsi is a Neolithic mummy, a natural mummy, so called because his embalming process was not intentional. It was the arid and cold weather of the extreme altitude of the Tyrolean mountains where he passed which was responsible for this mummification and it was so complete that he was preserved as he fell for more than 5,000 years. Due to this exquisite level of preservation there are numerous fascinating details that were discovered. Utsi for example was covered in tattoos but these were found to be medicinal tattoos, hash lines and marks made over old injuries, the pain of the tattoo helping to mask the pain of the injury. Utsi was was about 45 when he passed, having lived a hard life and already grizzled by the hard world he lived in. And he carried numerous fascinating artifacts, which eventually helped us unravel the mystery of his passing. Thanks to the analysis of his stomach contents and the pollen therein, we've been able to map out his path through the elevation of the mountains. It seems that Utsi was actually driven into the mountains, forced to flee for his life. He had eaten two and eight hours before his passing, and had eaten the meals at different altitudes showing that he was forced to continue marching through the mountains. We now know that he initially descended into the valley, worked on his tools, and was there accosted. He suffered a defensive wound to the palm of his hand as he tried to block the blade of a stone implement, managing to escape his pursuers, and then worked on repairing his arrows. Then something happened which drove him even farther into the mountains. Likely, as he fled for his life, he would be hit in the back with a stone-tipped arrow at high altitude, which eventually ended his life. But Utsi wasn't robbed. He had a very valuable and very rare copper adze with him, and yet none of his belongings, even the fine tools, were taken. This likely means that whoever ended him knew him, wanted to do him harm, and chased him into the Tyrolean mountains with the pure intention of ending his life. But why? To this day, the mystery slowly unravels as we make greater discoveries about the life of Neolithic humans in southern Europe. Next is the Rosetta stone. Perhaps the single most critical and influential discovery in the history of Egyptology, the Rosetta Stone was the key which unlocked the Egyptian written languages, allowing researchers to finally translate hieroglyphics and demotic script. The Rosetta Stone is one of numerous stones carved on the command of King Ptolemy V, containing a decree which established a divine cult of their leader, worshipping the young king as a new god. But the decree itself has taken a backseat in terms of the influence and importance of the way in which the decree was carved. The stele is comprised of three large paragraphs, each saying the same concepts and words but in slightly different translations. The fact that the same message was written almost word for word in three different languages on the same stone allowed researchers to use their knowledge of ancient Greek to then translate the Egyptian languages left behind. This opened up the possibility for researchers to actually understand the vast amounts of writing all around the ancient Egyptian empire. It was so critical to our understanding of the ancient Egyptian language that to this day, the phrase Rosetta Stone means anything which unlocks a significant discovery or paradigm shift. The discoveries of the great necropolis of Saqqara and numerous other sites would mean far less if we didn't know how to translate the writings that surrounded them. Next is Pompeii. Pompeii is especially notable because it offers a rare opportunity for researchers to examine an immediately preserved snapshot of Roman life. The city was buried by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, which destroyed the city in a single afternoon, buried under toxic ash and rock. While horrifying, this had the beneficial effect, for us today at least, of instantly encasing the entire city, preserving it as it was with no influence from the rest of history. This is an unparalleled level of access and accuracy through a window into the past. Very few sites have this level of in situ importance. Hundreds of entombed Romans have been recovered, many in heartbreaking positions which serve to remind us that these were all people just like you or me. And while the ash fell, they held their loved ones, prayed, tried to hide, and in some cases tried to get in a little bit of fun before their world ended. It's considered to this day to be one of the best 
sources of knowledge and information on the daily life of a Roman citizen within the Empire. Next is Sutton Hoo. Sutton Hoo was one of the first and most complete discoveries coming from medieval England ever discovered, especially in 1937 when it was initially uncovered. The site consists of two large burial mounds from the Anglo-Saxon period, each of which is a ship burial, where a large warship was dragged ashore and filled with grave goods and the deceased before it was then buried under a mountain of dirt. This dirt burial allowed these sites to remain untouched for 1300 years years, preserving their contents shockingly well. Inside were numerous fascinating and highly ornate artifacts, many of which were made of finely worked gold and other precious metals and stones. This exquisite find of hundreds of artifacts and almost entirely preserved ships was actually discovered by an amateur archaeologist, Basil Brown, who did an exceptional job of excavating and preserving the site until it was taken over by professional archaeologists from nearby universities. To this day, excavation continues as more and more details about the East Anglian Anglo-Saxons and their time in Britain is revealed. Next are the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls are a collection of ancient scrolls discovered in the West Bank before it was invaded and occupied. The scrolls are incredibly critical pieces of history, which reveal a significant amount about what life was like 23 to 1900 years ago for the people of the Levant. Much of this has been critical to our understanding of Jewish and Middle Eastern history and has given a great insight into the past of the Levant. Hundreds of scrolls were recovered, and yet only a few of them have been able to be deciphered. Many of these scrolls spent centuries in the salt of the Dead Sea, and they have aged considerably over the millennia. Many of them are simply too fragile to handle or even unravel, and so instead, researchers are developing new techniques and technologies which x-ray the scrolls and analyze the patterns of ink pigmentation, along with numerous other details which, when put into a computer program can be formed into a 3D render of the scroll, which can then be digitally unraveled and read. This has only happened for a few scrolls, but is very promising and will possibly lead to even more formally unreadable scrolls coming founts of historical knowledge. Next is the Combat Gulf. During a routine pollution survey in the Gulf of Kambat, researchers stumbled upon the remains of an ancient city, which was a surprising find. Using sonar technology, they detected geometric shapes beneath the sea's floor, revealing eventually a vast city complex covering about 24 square kilometers. This remarkable discovery could change our understanding of history as we know it, with some claims that it predates the Bronze Age Indus Valley civilization, previously thought to be the old urban culture. However, skepticism remains. While many agree the site appears man-made, questions about its age and the artifacts found still persist. The area is challenging due to heavy tidal movements that could damage the site and mix in artifacts from elsewhere. Yet, many researchers believe this is indeed an ancient city lost beneath the waves, with human remains and numerous artifacts suggesting that it was quickly submerged, possibly in a catastrophic flood. Some have since speculated that the Indus River Valley Civilization, located nearby on the same subcontinent, may have actually descended from the Kambat Civilization, carrying tales of the flood that evolved into myths across numerous subsequent cultures. Those were ancient civilization discoveries made by scientists that changed history. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.